I work at Donnerlab, a startup based in Darmstadt here in Germany and we are building applications on top of Lightning, especially with a focus on gaming, but also topics about onboarding, about ease of use, which I think are pretty important at the moment right now. So I want to show you some of the stuff we do. Second. So Donnerlab was founded last year after the first Lightning Hack Day. Uh, there I showed off a plugin for the Unity game engine. This plugin allowed developers to basically integrate Lightning payments to their Unity games. So it connects to your uh, LND node and you could basically pay invoices. So here was a small demo I made, which where I am in, in virtual reality and I copy this uh, Blockstream sticker invoice. And the cool thing about games, you can make those uh, invoices to be like physical. So I create this invoice in front of me, I decode it and then I pay it. So you see, oh, its destination is Blockstream. And now it's trying to pay. And it went through and I was pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> so at the following hack day, I showed off a Minecraft server-side plugin, which allows basically that you can pay a Minecraft server in Lightning. For example, here I do a small like uh, teleportation, so users pay the server to set their home and I can teleport them back. And it's also fun because now the invoice is in the game and you could throw other users the invoice they, they could pay for them because it was rendered on this map. Yeah. So yes. We created then we created a voucher system so that you can easily distribute liquidity of your Lightning node to your friends and families. And we used that for our Twitch live streams so that my friends could also play with me. Yeah. So we really like the idea of Lightning enabled uh, games. And we now decide to create our own fully fleshed out game, which is from the ground up designed for. Oh, sorry. Present. I need my notes. Yes. All right, sorry about that. Okay. So, yeah, we decided to create our own, our own uh, game, which was from the ground up designed for Lightning. But first of all, why would you combine Lightning with uh, gaming? So, first of all, um, Games would really benefit from peer-to-peer -peer payments because right now at the moment in the gaming ecosystem it is only that users pay a server, pay a game developer, but you don't have like this highly liquid market where a, a, a gamers themselves, they can earn money by playing that game. So also the concept of microtransactions would be pretty cool for games because right now it's this weird thing where you buy a diamond for $5 and you can use those diamonds. They are called microtransactions, but I don't think they are. Also, these microtransactions would lead to cool new gameplay elements, I think, which you can see in our game, I would say. And also we can think about digital assets, digital tokens, which... Uh, yeah, if, if you look at games like Counter-Strike, for example, you can buy and sell skins and they are in the worth of thousands of dollars. So it would be pretty interesting. And I mean, with Liquid and RGB and Counterparty, you have some of those concepts already and available for gaming. However, I think they are too, at the moment, too expensive for gaming. Because gaming is centralized anyway. You, you always trust the developer you, that you don't need these, these highly sophisticated systems. What would gaming do for Bitcoin? I think we would earn a lot from good game developers in Bitcoin. First of all, use cases. I mean, it's nice to buy stickers uh, with Lightning, but I think we can do better. I think we can create new use cases which haven't been seen before. Uh, the next is users. There are a lot of users. If you look at Steam, it has about 67 million monthly active users. If we would just capture some of them for, for Bitcoin and Lightning would be amazing. 
Those users would bring in liquidity, which we also need because we shouldn't only huddle, but we need spendless as well. And I think gamers are perfect for, for spending because they like spending. They really do. Also, you would in, uh, get a lot of creativity because those game developers, they're used to work with technical boundaries. I mean, if you look at the past, what they did with old game systems, how they, what they turned out uh, of amazing gameplay elements out of these restrictions was pretty cool. And also games are a cool test bed for Lightning and for applications built on top of Lightning because they are just games, you know, it's not, it's not something, or we could, we could see it as something fun, not as something serious. So our game is called Donner Dungeon and it was designed from the ground up to include payments as a core gameplay element. Um, when we started like, thinking about how to uh, include payments in our games, it was not, okay, let's buy an item or uh, let's like, buy a teleport in Minecraft because that is not fun. And also awarding Satoshis, for example, for competitive play is also, you would in incentivize cheating so much that it's, it, it's not a gameplay element. It's just something on top of a game. So what we looked at was the concept of donations. So if you look at live streaming websites like Twitch or I don't know, more YouTube gaming is also big somewhat. So we decide we want to create a streaming enabled game. So in our game, viewers play against the streamer and they pay to be able to play against the streamer. So we sometimes live stream to test our game. This is a very early prototype. I don't do full screen now. So you can see I'm playing, I'm playing as the witch and the viewers, they pay me, you see on the right, they are the names of the viewers. They pay me to, so that they can send in monsters. And the way we do this is they compete with each other. So the one that paid the highest price will, will get in the next group, uh, in the next wave. Yeah. Okay, but when we went that route, that uh, brought a lot of difficulties with it. So our game use, used our, or uses our Unity plugin and it had to connect to a lightning node. So the streamer, he needs to run his own lightning node. With Neutrino, that wouldn't seem as difficult. However, to include Neutrino in the game was another part. And even if he is running his own node, we need to think about channel management. Does he not have enough liquidity? And um, does he need Bitcoin for starters? We thought about, which I still think is interesting, that they would buy our game on Steam and would get a refund back so that we can open a channel and give them some Bitcoin. For example, you would pay $20 for the game and, and would receive $5 back in Bitcoin. But we didn't like that concept, it, it was too hard and it was against our concept of easy onboarding. So we created our own gaming platform, it's called Donner. And if you have seen a theme with our naming, so Donner is German for thunder, which we like as a concept for lightning and we slap Donner in front of everything we do. So Donner is designed to be a platform for users and developers. It, it will make it easy to include lightning payments into your applications and in, into games with no prior experience needed. And it doesn't need requirements like a node, but it can use them. It is completely centralized because we think in the concept of gaming, decentralization is, is far away. It could be that we reach it, but game developers, they are used to working centralized and it's, it's just easier and more cheap. So some of the core concept we use is, is what we call stashes. Those are similar to custodial wallets. However, with Lightning, custodial wallets can be pretty cool as Lightning is so fast. You can just, you log in, you fill up your wallet, you play the game and you, the game uses your custodial wallet and after you log out, you immediately get your funds back to your node, if you have a node. Yes. So for example, in our game, because cheap uh, payments can be super cheap, like five Satoshis, if you would play for one hour, you would have like 50% of, of those Satoshis paid in, paid in routing fees. If you just um, deposit to our stash, you would just do two lightning payments. I almost said on-chain payments. <laughs> it's layer three or what. 
Okay, then the next part is the transaction system. So, yes, we use custodial wallets, but you do not, do not need to use them. So, we don't want to force users to a custodial wallet. When you open a transaction, or when a developer opens a transaction for you, you can decide whether you want to receive it on your stash or provide an in invoice with a transaction and thus receiving the transaction directly. Also, when you pay for the transaction, it's similar. You just get a transaction ID. In the transaction ID, there's also the invoice. So if the, it doesn't depend whether the transaction creator wanted it on, an, on his note or in the stash, you can pay the invoice or you can provide the, to your stash basically the transaction ID and thus pay with your custodial wallet. The developer then gets a, a, a webhook so he knows when a transaction is paid because you can also do peer-to-peer uh, -peer payments where then one of the, uh, one of the peers would just provide the, our, our platform with a pre-image so that the developer knows that a transaction has been paid. Then we also have the concept of inventories which is like, like an inventory in a game. It can hold digital tokens, it can hold items. Then we, we will have a marketplace where those assets, assets can be traded and for cheap because there's no blockchain, there's no decentralization. So it's pretty cheap and it's pretty fast as well. We, we do not have them implemented, but yeah, I think we can replace a lot of, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm right. I think we can uh, replace a lot of gaming related uh, altcoins, let's call them that, and maybe it could be used for more than gaming, for licenses or utility tokens, whatever. Those are just digital assets that can be traded. And all those concepts tie together in our worlds, so every user on a platform has the possibility to create a world. A user can then join the world and he will have a game-specific or world-specific stash and inventory. The owner of this world has complete control over the stashes and inventories. And it is, it is what we use in our game. I will show you now. But you trust the developer of the game fully with the amount that you load your stash. But our idea is, okay, stashes can be loaded super quick. So you just, in one context of one game session, you would load it with as much as you trust the developer. And then you will be fine, basically. And if, if it will be a bigger payment, you can still go the peer-to-peer -peer route. So, all right, live demo. I pray to the demo gods often today. Let's see how it turns out. So this is our, oh, I will now switch here. So this is our game in Unity. So I start the game, I can play it offline, but this is not fun. Oh, it's a little bit loud. Fully fleshed game, with, even with sound and music. So if you log in, I, I will now choose to log in with Google. I know many probably would not like this, but I think it's cool. If, if we can support it, because a lot of gamers, I think, would like it. So now I'm, I joined the game and I'm in the lobby. I will now try to do the, the viewer workflow. Or maybe. So first of all, as a user, you would go to our client app. Just create an account. So this is the other type of uh, login that we support, which is a one-time password via mail. I've now created a new user. I have this username. Let's do it. Lightning Hack Day. And now you see I have this stash. So this stash, it is basically like a wallet. I can choose to receive and I have some vouchers with me which load it up for me. And I have some for you if you want to try it, our system. So this one should work. 
It will now ask for the camera. <laughs> okay, now I have 200 Satoshis. So if I want to play our game as the viewer now, I go to our game website which runs Unity on a, in, a, in a browser and this is basically because in our game the viewer has a, has a game for himself. So I need to log in again. And now this is the game that I opened by playing, so I would now join this, the streamer. And in our game, it's basically every new round, you get a new selection of fighters, and you can combine them if you have of the same type. You can combine them that they will be stronger. And now, if I want to invest, I can, if it works. <laughs> oh, okay, I need to restart that. Second. <laughs> I knew that would happen. One second. Just it will take some time to uh, reboot the back end, but it, now I can show you while this is restarting. So before I didn't have the stage for the game. If I would, would invest, I would have the possibility to get the invoice right here in this box to pay for it with real lightning or I would have the option to pay with a wallet. And so this was, it should have created now this stash for our game, so for the Donner Dungeon game. And I would now load it with, I don't know, I trust me with 50 Satoshi. And the developer has only access to this, this stash. So is it back again? should be back. All right. Now we need to... Where was the game? Oh, not here. Yeah, we talk about ease of use. We're not there yet. Okay, I don't know if it will work. Probably crash the back end again. Hmm? Game created. Okay, now I'm back. I can select. Let's hope that the investment works now. Yes, so now you can see, okay, I can choose to pay with Lightning, which then I would receive the invoice right here, or I can choose to pay with my wallet. And now the streamer has received, you see, okay, LH paid for plus one, paid plus one Satoshi, and there are al already two other players in the game. So now you see I chose the hounds to fight against me. Ah, now there are payments coming in from other players as well. So the goal is simply for me to survive and kill the troops that the viewers sent me, basically. And now just to switch back to, the, to what the viewer would see. So now I get a new round of picks. And I would see, okay, I'm last in queue because I have not invested anything. So I want to be first. I would invest. And now I'm fighting against, oh, no, block beat me. <laughs> yeah, so this basically is also the, the it's, it's kind of an auction that the viewers play against each other where they pay the highest price to basically um, play against the streamer. Let's play. 
Uh, now, now I was highest, but didn't choose another unit. Yes, so, and this is basically it. If I'm now logging off, and I would have, if I would have shown what my balance was on the streamer account. So now I can find the mouse. Now I would log in back with my streamer account. And now I would have a bigger amount of Satoshis than I, I unfortunately didn't show you before, but at the bottom you can see those were the recent transactions that were paid for me. Now I would remove those from my game specific stash and hopefully, oh, ah, it's from stash to stash. And now the game would have no control anymore over, over this custodial stash and I could send it out to a node or to a wallet of my choice. I could try that. I'm not running out of time yet. So how many? Ah, I, don't, I don't want to show it. Just believe me, it works if I pay, pay for it. Take too much time. All right. <coughs> so this was it. Thank you. I will try to set up more of a live demo station, basically, where you could try the game. I have these vouchers with me so that you do not need to spend your own sats because, yeah, you see how well it works. Any questions? None so far. All right, then, thank you. The release date for the game, well, we said half a year ago or some months ago that January this year, but now we will say in two months probably, because we had this problem with all this channel management stuff and how to include the node, but now we can basically distribute the game for free and everybody can just start playing it f from the get-go. But you can still also connect it to your node if you want. So two weeks TM. Two weeks TM. Thank you.